In the second part of this video series, How to Send Morse Code Over the Internet Using Linux, we're going to concentrate on downloading and installing uh, excuse me, FL Digi, the second piece of software that we need. And FL Digi, you can go to this link here and learn more about it, but it's one of the best CW sending softwares out there. So in order to do that, get your Synaptic Package Manager back up, type in FL Digi into Quick Search, click on it, mark for installation, apply, apply, and it should crunch you that in pretty quick order. And FL Digi will have been installed automatically by the Synaptic Package Manager. Okay, good. Looks like it did it. So we'll minimize this, go to Applications, Internet, or sometimes you get a category there too with Ham Radio, FL Digi. Okay, so go to the App Mode, click on CW, go down to the Pitch, yours will probably be set at 1000. So take these controls right to the left of it there, this is 10s and that's by 1 right next to it and we usually have a pitch around 700 then go to the configure go to modems go to the audio tab right now it's selected as port audio select pulse pulse audio and now you'll see that pulse audio just showed FL Digi and on the selection for the sound card that you're gonna play FL Digi to you're going to select the loopback, which you haven't built yet. So I'm going to just show you what FL Digi sounds like. So that's why I like Pulse Audio Volume Control. You just change sound cards, change volumes. So we'll turn it up for right now. So you have to click this TX button to transmit. You'll get a red light. So now you're in transmit mode. I'll send a V here. Okay, so you know FL Digi is working. All right, so we'll go back to the loopback sound card. I'm going to turn this down to about eh, 60 or so. You don't need that much volume when you're sending it over to Mumble. All right, let's bring this back up. Let's go through some more of these settings on FL Digi. This is fine. You don't have to worry about the settings here because Pulse Audio defaults to its own settings. Make sure don't worry about that just in the devices select this pulse audio right there okay go back to modem tab CW tab general tab click this up all the way and if you wanted to monitor if uh, you happen to log in and there's some QRQ going on you want to kinda just practice a little bit and maybe catch up you can have FL Digi monitor it and decode it a little bit and as you get bogged down you can kinda look up and catch what words you might have missed. This allows the maximum words per minute tracking. So you have to adjust your sending speed to match what you think is going on with the, what you're listening to. Anyway, default is when you hit the slow button, which is the star button on the number pad, which I'll show you here. When you hit that star button on your number pad on your keyboard, it automatically defaults to whatever speed you put here. So if you're sending along an FL Digi and you want to say something complicated or you want him to get it, maybe a, a web address or some kind of a weird word that you or you wanted to s spell out a phone number, you know, whatever it is, you know it's going to be difficult at the, the current speed that you're sending for the other person to get it. You can slow it down here just by hitting the start button. It'll automatically go, as I have set it, down to 20. As soon as you hit the start button again, it'll go right back up to the speed you were at. The upper limit is on your dial. How far do you want this to go? It goes all the way up to 200 words a minute. And I'll just leave it at this speed for right now, but you could set that all the way up. You can also control this with the plus and minus button on your number pad on your keyboard. So, but you have to be, your cursor has to be on this screen here. The CW speed is located right there, so at 18, watch, I want to have it uh, go up by hitting the plus button, now the minus button. So that's how you adjust your speed real quick.
Okay. For right now, let's get back into the modem again, and let's go to the timing in QSK. Here you can set your weight, your dash to dot, your edge timing. I'm going to take this up to six. Again, however hard or soft you want your keying to be, it's all variable right there. You have a choice between Hanning and Blackman types of race cosine edges. For QRQ, I like the Blackman. It's just a little bit thinner sounding. And Hanning is just kind of a normal race cosine. This is just a little bit thinner uh, as far as it sounds to me and how, how to describe it. Okay. Save it so you don't lose these settings. I'm going to minimize it for right now. Now let's take FL Digi over here for a second. And we'll move Mumble over here so you can see what's going on. Uh, okay. Now over on the Mumble screen, you'll see my call sign. Right now it's gray. I want to send some Morse code, and it should light up red. And there it is. So that means you're transmitting. So right now I'm taking FL Digi and sending it on this virtual sound card that I'll show you how to build in video 3. Mumble is listening on its input to that sound card because it says monitor. And that's the one you want. FL Digi is listening on the sound card as far as this drop down, this uh, flow chart here, this uh, waterfall display. And you can play with that later, but that's for another video as far as how to decode stuff on I'm just going to concentrate on how to send CW right now for the applications okay so how do you listen to your own CW over mumble to see what you sound like we send some V's we don't hear anything but we see that we're transmitting well we want to see what we sound like to others so in order to do that you go to the configure menu settings Go to the Out Audio Output tab. Again, go down to this loopback test. And go over here to this tab and select Server. Click Apply. Click OK. Now everything we send should come right back to us. There it is. So you can send a test file. You also, uh, FL Digi has a really nice feature. You can send letters. I'm going to select V on this timing and QST tab if you click Send Continuous. And now you can change things. So that's the rise and fall time. You can change this to however you like. We'll turn it up to really soft here. It goes all the way up to 15. And you can change the dash to that ratio. You hear the difference? Take the weight down. So you can do all this live and just really adjust it in. That's too heavy, of course. So I'll go back down to 50. So if you want to, you can even change the pitch. Okay, so that's enough of that. So once you're satisfied that you like what you sound like, go back into Configure, Settings, Audio Output, Loopback Test, take it off the server. If you forget to do this, no one's going to be able to hear you. You'll hear yourself, but nobody else will. Click Apply, and then OK. So now we're good. That should be everything we need to get going. And if you're not transmitting your cursor somewhere else and you, you're hitting the keys, you're not going to be able to send CW to that cursor is on this blue screen, as you see, just popped in there. And then you can send CW. 
So I'm still in a testing room. Let's get out of here and go up into the welcome message again. Again, left click, hold, drag, go to newcomers channel. Okay, so audio's still doing good. Go back up to ICW. Okay, and now we'll go to the remote control icon. Now if you're a regular ham radio operator, an official ham radio operator, and uh, with your own license, official license, you can use this. just have to give your call sign. Put your mouse hover over the ICOM 735 remote. And a text message should come up eventually. There it was. So then just read that, and then if you'll just add that at the end of it, you can use this. It's pretty much stuck on one channel. I usually put the channel that it's stuck on. I don't have a fancy uh, internet controlled rig yet, but for the fog net and for the HF QRQ net on the weekends, we allow members from all over the United States and the world to check in and join the net through uh, Mumble and over ICW. So I'll demonstrate. I'll do QRL here. So that just keyed my rig in the other room. And I heard just a little bit of the side tone coming back through from the uh, ICOMS audio. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay, now what if you want to hear your own side tone? What can you do? Well, if you'll go to System, excuse me, uh, Application, Sound and Video, and click the Pulse Audio Device Chooser. I'll show you how to do that. That's that little icon up here. So click that and say configure lo local sound server. Simultaneous output, go to that tab and click that. Okay, close. So now on FL Digi, on the playback on the Pulse Audio, this is another reason I like this, instead of just sending to the loopback, we're going to say send it to both sound cards. Okay. Let's see what happens. We're still in transmit, the red button, so let's see. There we go. Let's see if our icon's going red. There it is. So, that's how you can hear your own side tone through the Pulse Audio system. And you can adjust the volume here if you like. One thing about the volume on Mumble, it has an automatic AGC circuit, so while you're in the loopback test, you might want to turn this volume down. Let's say if we're just doing the loopback. You might want to turn this volume down until you just start to notice a decrease in volume that doesn't recover. And maybe take it up just a little bit, or leave it just a little bit below that uh, threshold. If you go too high, you're going to distort into mumble, especially on the first, first uh, CW note or two. So generally around 50-60% you're going to be okay. And that way you won't distort on your first note. And if you pause for a little bit and the AGC recovers, and when it hit, when the mumble AGC uh, kicks in again, they're going to get a little distorted first note. So now, all we have to do in the third video is show you how to build that loopback sound card. And it uh, seems to work very well. And there's a website you can learn a little bit about it. Look, let me spread it out there a little bit, just in case you want to see if you type it in and it's something like that I think this is just the regular ALSA site so you can type that into Google I don't think all the address is showing up here you can learn about it it's also on this site here which is where how we're going to learn how to build it so go ahead and click on video 3 and we'll finish this video series up how to send Morse code over the internet using Linux